$150,000 is an amazing budget for your dream car, and there's a tremendous array of awesome choices that you could pick, but there's only one correct answer. I voted with my own pocketbook for this one, and it is a Ferrari 430 Scuderia. I bought one last year and I absolutely love the car. It's as raw as you could ever want a road car to be, and in my opinion, it's the best Ferrari you could buy for less than $500,000. It's so much fun, it's easy to just hop in, go have fun with, and not worry that much about. Different than the Mercy in that way, because it's not so big and impossible to see out of. It's actually rather comfortable. I've taken it on long road trips, and I wouldn't trade it for anything, like I said, unless I was spending an awful lot more money. So I love mine, but I was curious to know what other people would pick. Obviously all going to be the wrong answers, but these were theirs. There's only one right answer here, guys, so save yourselves the rest of this video. Ed's probably gonna mention his Scud, and that's cute, and more than one person is gonna say a used McLaren, also super adorable. Have no doubt you're gonna hear and have heard lots of wrong answers, mainly from people who can't drive a manual transmission car. Look, if you care about driving, if you care about driving, there's only one correct answer, and that is the Porsche 911 GT3 Touring. I had the chance last year to drive Hope. That's Tom's Paint to Sample Club Blue 911 GT3 Touring. And as you can tell from my face in the video you're about to see, the permagrin I had on my face, it was amazing. Throttle response to shame all cars, turbocharged or otherwise, and the noise is orgasmic. It is pure sex. Turn up the volume, have yourself a listen. I bet you'll agree with me. For $150,000, I'd get a full classic. I'd want a convertible. I'd want it manual, sort of manual. I'd want it supercharged, and I'd want it to look mean. And the car that meets all that criteria is an 812 Cord. This is an 810 here, the non-supercharged version, but you get the idea. They're a fantastic car, they look mean, they're long, low, sleek, and most importantly, it has pop-up headlights. If you've been watching these videos and you've seen me in them, you probably know about my affinity for the long roof. This is my Volvo V70R and it was my pick for $15,000. But for $150,000, there aren't a ton of long roofs you can buy. There's maybe a Mercedes um, AMG you can buy. There's uh, the new Audi uh, RS6 Avant that's coming to the US. But the one I would buy because of my affinity for the long roof is the Ferrari FF. It's a V12 clown shoe with all wheel drive from Ferrari. I mean, <laughs> how much more ridiculous can you get? And they sound epic. So for 150 grand, you can find these all day long. They're under 150 grand. The really good ones with low mileage are just a shade over 150. But I mean, with less than 10,000 miles on it, you can probably find them to the warranty still from Ferrari. I would go for the Ferrari FF. No question, hands down, the best car you can buy for 150K. For 150 grand, I'm picking up a 2019 Aston Martin Vantage with a twin turbo V8 from AMG. As a six foot four girthy gentleman, I find that it's difficult to find a sports car, a true sports car, in which I can fit comfortably. And the Aston Martin is that car. I've driven one before. It's insanely fast. The handling is fantastic. And the noise that it makes, that exhaust note is just disgusting. All right, 150K is an amazing price point to find a lot of great modern uh, supercars at. Porsche 911 GT3, McLaren 570S, Ferrari 458 Italia. Um, but the thing that I would be looking for at that price point, I think would be a classic that's gonna be fun and connected to drive. So I'm gonna go with a Ferrari F430 Scuderia. It's one of my favorite cars I've ever driven. And for pretty high mileage, you can find something right around 150,000 with some shrewd negotiating. So gotta go with the Ferrari. I like being creative and unique, but in this case, the answer is just so obvious. It's something I could drive every day and go straight to the racetrack. Are you with me, people? Porsche 911 GT3. I don't know if you can get a new one still for 150, and the 2021 is not out yet, but what a fabulous, great handling, refined, proper car that does everything right at 9,000 RPM. If you are a taste of art and a connoisseur of the Americana, such as myself, would you buy a GT3 RS? No, you would not. Would you buy yourself an R8? No, 
Also, no, you would not buy these things. You would buy yourself a 1965 Shelby Daytona replica. The car that Ferrari himself feared at the racetrack. The name shocks everyone in the racing community. The name Shelby. You buy yourself a 1965 Daytona Shelby replica. You ride it through the streets and you ride to glory. 150,000. Well, if any bank were crazy enough to give me a loan for that amount, it'd probably be for an SLS AMG with the gold wing. I think it's a beautiful car and it's the last Mercedes supercar to have the old school big American V8 engine without the help of turbos or any of that nonsense. It's just a fantastic car. For $150,000, I am going to walk into my Ferrari dealership in 1998 and on my left, there is an F-355 and on my right, there is a 550. And I know if I go to my left now, I can go and bring a trailer and buy that car for $85,000 and then put $50,000 improving the headers, improving the valve guides. Everything in that interior is, is sticky. That's normal, don't get freaked out. But every time you put your foot down in that car, it will be worth every engine out service. There is a noise that that car makes somewhere north of 6,000 RPM where you just, you think it doesn't have another 1,000 RPM and it's got another two. On the other hand, you could go and buy a 550 every day and I'm really reluctant to say this out loud. I don't want to admit this out loud to the internet because I feel like 550s and 575s have just a tremendously classic shape. They make the right noise. They don't have screens in them. They, you know, there was this perfect world that we had in the 1990s where we had figured out fuel injection, but we hadn't figured out how to put supercomputers between you and the drive wheels. It was this perfect era of hydraulic steering, and I feel like a, a V12 front engine Ferrari, it's, it's what they do best. I mean, it's, it's their bread and butter since the GTO. Ah, I mean, flip a coin on that. This week's budget, $150,000. By far the best car you can get for $150,000 is a McLaren 570S. My guys over at Chicago Motor Cars get these things in all the time in that price range, and that's what I would buy. For $150,000, that's a lot of money. And there are so many great choices that are out there. And actually, thought long and hard about this. Certainly, uh, I would say immediately that comes to mind, a GT3, Porsche, but something that I owned, which I love, was a the original Gallardo Superleggera from 2008. It's not the best version of the Gallardo. Actually, that goes to the Super Trofeo Stradale. And to use Ed's term with some shrewd negotiations, maybe you can get something pretty close to 150. They're in the high 100s at this point, but um, I would say, given the times, go for a Super Trofeo Stradale with some shrewd negotiations. I'm buying the new 1,000 horsepower, 1,046 foot-pounds of torque custom 455 Super Duty Trans Am from Trans Am Worldwide. In addition to the supercharger and that Hurst shifter, you can put me down for the Brembo brake package and those custom polycarbonate T-tops too. Hi, I'm John from Cara, and we'll be doing a $150,000 car for VinWiki. So, $170,000 is what they're asking for this 2000 Rolls-Royce Corniche. Mm -hmm. Now, so here's the deal. I currently sell five mobile homes a week. Five. five. And if I had this, I could sell seven. Seven a week, per week, to people who need this kind of housing. And so that's why I picked this convertible 2000 Corniche Rolls-Royce. Okay, balls. Nobody wants a, any year Rolls-Royce Corniche for any amount of money. It, especially $150,000. For 150 grand, what you want, and I'm gonna push replica cars again, a replica of the 911 RSR from 1974, the original IROC car, the best pre-turbo 911 ever built and phenomenal on the street. You can get those for a little less than 150, or for a little over 150, you can get a replica of the famous so how Porsche 959 Paradecar race car, which is built on a 964 chassis, 
Tremendous, gorgeous, beautiful. I want both of those in my garage. How many walkers can you get? In a Can't Porsche? fit any walkers in a Porsche. So then, how's that going to work in a Walmart? Nobody's going to. A... No, no. I'm going to sell five um, a week. I'm going to sell seven a week. I'm going to sell seven a week when I get this Corniche. You can sell not this this thing that can't fit any you can walkers. Sell, you can. I I guarantee you can sell ten mobile homes a week with a Porsche 911 RSR. Well, that's just BS. For me, I think it's got to be a Porsche 911 GT3 uh, 2018 or newer. So that gets you a 991.2, which was available again with the manual transmission. So four liter, 500 horsepower, goes way up to 9,000 RPMs. Uh, just one of the best driving experiences you can get, I think, whether you're driving on the road or the track and uh, simply put a set of Hadgets and Hoosiers on it and you're going to have a blast. So this week for a $150,000 budget, I've chosen uh, a Ferrari 599 GTB uh, F1 gearbox uh, built in 2006, 9,100 kilometers, uh, beige interior and it's red, which is always better for a Ferrari, let's be honest, well, that's my opinion. Hey guys, BJ here with Exotic Car Hacks, and the best car I would buy if I had a budget of $150,000 would have to be, you ready for this, a Rolls-Royce Ghost Series 2. I think it's one of the best buys on the market right now for under $150,000 for a Series 2, which you can buy basically at 2015 uh, to 2017 for around that amount. If you search hard enough, just make sure it has the rear theater configuration and is an exciting color. Uh, possibly if you can even get uh, things such as better wheels, uh, that's an upgrade as well. But otherwise, that's probably my favorite car under 50 grand. Well, it's a car I already owned, but I sold it. So kind of regret that, but it would be something that kills bugs fast. And that would be the Porsche 993 Turbo in Arena Red right there and of course the one i sold was arena red so a little sad about that but oh well had to make room for another lambo okay i've got to pick three one the mercedes sls amg that is just such a timeless cool car two is the radical rxc which is the most insane track car you can get for anywhere near that price and three is the one that i'd really put miles on i think which is a 2014 or 15 Audi R8 with the V10 engine and the gated manual, of course. There were only 86 of those made for the North American market. Um, I mean, you can get R8s way cheaper than that if you go for an older one or an automatic or whatever, but there is one listed right now, 130,000, um, but it's only got 12,000 miles and it's got the V10 and the manual. That would just be amazing. This one actually was kind of a no-brainer. I keep it on uh, on the forefront because I think once once all this ends, the next car uh, that I am going to buy it might be in this range if I can scratch up enough cash for that. I hope maybe one day the 997.2 Porsche GT3 RS. I got one as a press car when it was new in 2011 and the car I got was actually the same car that Richard Hammond crashed at VIR. They, they fixed it and uh, and I got it a couple of months later after Top Gear was done with it and I, I took it to the Mojave Mile which taking a GT3 RS to the Mojave Mile is obviously not what that car is meant for but we were filming a television show at the time and it was what I had. Um, the point being my drive from my house in Los Angeles to that that shootout in Mojave was one of the great drives, one of the more memorable drives in my life. All right, so if the limit for money is $150,000, I think I have to go with either a McLaren 650S or a McLaren 570S for the car that I would purchase for that price. Fantastic performance, amazing styling, and it has the doors that everybody likes. Probably some of the best supercar deals under $150,000 right now. Oh, I'm moving. But more importantly, I have to think about what cars to buy. And this week it's $150,000. And I have two vehicles. The first one, of course, is the Lamborghini Murcielago. I really don't care what year it is. They're all cool. It'll talk to you about which one's rare or not. 
For me, it's gotta be a gated manual. That goes to, without saying for any car. So just go find one, straight pipe it, make it lighter, and let it sing like the sirens of the gods. The second one, I don't know if I would actually get this, but in my mind, I think I would. I would get the latest generation of the Dodge Viper, but I would get the crazy ACR track pack with all the sprouty spoilers and everything ridiculous, but I'd get one that's white with blue stripes. And of course, I'd keep Goose here forever. $150,000 puts you into interesting territory because it's enough money to get you kind of like almost into supercar territory, but not quite. I mean, you could get a Porsche, but uh, just me, I don't like the way they look. Uh, or you could get a stripped down uh, Aston Martin Vantage or a lightly used one decked out, probably for less than 150. But if it were me, I'd get two cars. I'd get one brand new Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio for a semi-daily driver because let's, let's be honest, it's gonna break. And then the other car would be a used uh, Corvette Z06, C7, perfect. This was actually a pretty tough one for me. I went through the options and this is when you start to get into like the really fun dream car territory in my opinion. And the ones that I came up with were the LP570 Lamborghini Gallardo Super Legera. I've always loved the LP cars. I think the headlights are a lot nicer. I think the taillights are a lot nicer. It's a much better looking and better working car. Along with that, I went with the latest generation Audi R8, but basically a Huracan with a bigger interior and you get all the amenities and the cool sounds of a Huracan for a ton less money. The vehicle that I would have for this price range is a 2018. Porsche 911 Turbo S. And obviously I would have to do my two favorite modifications. One, remove the terrible catalytic converters because you don't need that. And number two, put on a chip, probably from Cobb tuning, they're very simple. The car would make mid 600 horsepower, mid 600 torque all day long and be a blast to drive. Now an incredibly iconic car guy film is the 2000s, Gone in 60 Seconds. Most everyone who follows cars, enjoys cars, has seen that movie and have all enjoyed watching Eleanor. So what I would get for $150,000, which just so happens to be this vehicle's price point, is this Eleanor tribute car. It's an officially licensed car. It's a little questionable that they're calling it a 1968 as it is supposed to be a 1967, but it comes with 428 cubic inch engine, manual transmission, looks true to movie, comes with a movie poster professionally framed, according to the description, comes with both a Nicolas Cage and Angelina Jolie autographed picture worth literally dollars, dollars. But most importantly of what you get with this car is you get the officially licensed Eleanor name. You don't have to worry about that uh, lawsuit to ever come behind it. And that's well worth $150,000. While I was talking to one of my dealers, I stumbled across my $150,000 choice a beautiful pre-owned certified 2018 Porsche GT3. Yellow exterior, black interior, 3,000 miles pre-owned certified. For $150,000, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a more fun car to drive. So for about $150,000, what I would choose is none other than a used Lamborghini. Make sure that it's a manual, but I would do maybe a Gallardo or a Mercy in early year. The LP640s are way too expensive, but these are awesome. For 150 grand, you can't go wrong with a Lambo. For $150,000, we're starting to get into that DuPont registry price range. I think I would have to choose a 997 GT3 RS. That way you still get the manual transmission. If I had $150,000 to spend in a car, I wouldn't buy anything right now. I would save it all for the upcoming C8 Z06. We already know how amazing the normal C8 is doing zero to 60 in like 2.8 seconds. The Z06 probably gonna be in the bottom twos. It's probably gonna be about $150,000. And I believe when it's released, it's gonna be considered the best sports car on the market. Not just the best budget sports car, but overall it's gonna destroy the competition. So I would save my money and buy a C8 Z06. The car I would choose for 150000 is very close to a car that's close to me, the manual GT3. I've got the touring version in a paint to sample, but you can get the wing version with a manual. It doesn't have to be paint to sample, and you'll get the absolute same spirit. It's a true driver's car. 
it's a manual, which is rare these days, revs to 9,000. It's rear engine, so it's got tons of grip, and it's the kind of car that's actually practical, but also reliable. It's the best of everything I love in an old school car, but also want out of a new modern car, yet it's naturally aspirated and so much fun. It gives you the kind of emotion and sound that you rarely get anymore. And the more it builds up to 9,000, the more emotional feeling you get from it. The reality is, is I would probably never spend $150,000 on a car for myself. I don't like making car payments, but the only thing I like less than making car payments is car repair bills. So I'm going to take my $150,000 and I'm going to drive to the nearest Porsche dealership and I'm going to drive out with a brand new 2020 Porsche 911 4S with a four year factory warranty and I'm going to drive the wheels off that car until I hit the mileage or the time first. And that's my pick at $150,000. Hey guys, what's going on? So for this week's challenge, I thought I knew what I was gonna pick and uh, I immediately jumped to a pre-LP Murcielago with a stick because those cars can be had uh, on either side of $150,000. However, then I remembered I am the Porsche guy around here and there is one Porsche that I love and lust after and I think it's going to be worth a crazy amount of money someday but that's beside the point i like it because it's a really good car and it's been behind me this whole time it's a car on that poster and it's a 997 gt3 rs like the one i'm holding in my hand and i think this is truly 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 one of the greatest cars uh ever made and yes it might be silly to spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a car that looks identical to my 2005 Carrera S, which is, shares many of the uh, similar body components, but the experience in this car is, is what makes it for me and makes it worth $150,000. Uh, the Metzger motor itself is loves to rev. It's not turbocharged. There's no nannies. This is truly the last visceral, truly visceral and analog Porsche that money could buy. What's up, guys? Mike from Max Speed. So I was doing a little research because I thought the GT3 was 150 grand. I was wrong. The GT3 RS is 150 grand. And after driving the GT3 on the racetrack, I can only assume that the GT3 RS is even more extreme. That's the car I would go with for $150,000. The GT3 RS. There's only one answer for 150 grand: Porsche 997.1 GT3 RS, bulletproof. 415 horsepower engine that revs to 8,400 RPM designed by the legendary Hans Metzger. Of course, they're all six speed manual. You can drive it to the track, drive it home, go get groceries, and they have built in roof rack receptacles so you can take your skis, your bikes, whatever. You can literally use it to do anything. You could drive it every day for the rest of your life and it would never quit. So this week our buddy Ed Bullion gave us a whopping $150,000 to buy whatever we'd like. And I know I could get one of those Ripsaw tanks and I think I could get the one from Fast and the Furious used if I could find it. But I ended up down here in South Carolina and uh, there's a car dealership that you should see because there's a car dealer that I know that just about everybody under the... Son, what are you doing? Talking about what? Hey, you see that right there? It's just What's like a Tesla. It's like a new Tesla Sport model. <laughs> It's kind of a budget version. All right. And I'm out of Harley. Well, I, it looks we like... We need a war. You need a tank. Or you don't need a tank. You need a heart. Man, there's deals to be had down here in South I'm Carolina. I'm telling you, there's deals to be had. Let me show you something that's better than a tank. Grab your camera. Let me get this real quick. Grab your camera. I want to show you something better than a tank. I want to tell you something, son. I want to tell you. Right here. Kia Soul. You know, you know how many miles it's got on it? Hell, nobody knows. A bunch. But you know what? It's a good one. It's got a hole in the top. Look, it's even got seats. In it. This thing is ready to rock. And it's green. Kind of like a tank. And it's tough. And this is the best thing ever right here. Check this out. You see this back bumper? I know what you're thinking. This thing's been damaged. It hasn't been damaged. This is street cred right here. I'm going to tell you something. When these backup lights come on and they see this, they're going to jump the hell out of your way. 
Thank you all so much. Great answers as always. If you've got a better way for us to spend 150,000 imaginary dollars, please let us know in the comments and please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. We'd like to thank Extreme Experience for sponsoring this video and this month of Vinwiki Car Stories. Extreme Experience gives you the chance to not spend 150 grand, but just a few hundred bucks to get behind the wheel of your dream car on some of America's most amazing racetracks. So be sure to check out the link in the description below for a discount and to see more information on their Father's Day giveaway of many driving experiences, but you'll get a great deal either way, and you'll get the chance to drive one of the cars from their fleet of Ferraris, Lamborghinis, McLarens, Porsches, anything you could ever want, even a C8 Corvette. So be sure to check them out and thank them for their support of Benwicky.